nobody who's ever changed anything has pandered to what people think. You're right. You have to basically close your eyes and your ears for the next 20 years and just put out what you want to put out and then you have a chance of making it happen. But the more you worry or think or strategize around acceptance, Mm -hmm. the more unlikely you'll achieve your goal. You got your perspective. I'm in Armenia. I'm about to speak. Yes, please. Just focused. Trying to think about what I'm going to speak about. It's a very international crowd. It's very political. A lot of world leaders. Uh, Big stage. And um, kind of debating whether I want to go through which, which angle do I want to go through, but I think the filter of what I'm most passionate about, which is consumer behavior, how, how we consume information, what that leads to, and more importantly, <clears throat> the 7,000 different organizations that are in that room, you could talk about AI, you could talk about machine learning, you could talk about big data, but at the end of the day, it's still, how does it make people think and live and do and how do you become the best contextual creator in the world, I think is what I think about. Yeah, I'm heading right back to New York. Yeah, it's in and out. Yep, story of my life. Please have a photo. photo? Sure. Thank you very You're welcome. Much. Hi, how are you? I, I'm a big fan. Thank you, thank you. So, yes, sir. What's your two words on positivity in management? It's required. What, what if the environment is very negative and they Then you leave. Okay. It, it's just the, it's the game, yeah, you know? We love you. Thank you, brother. Sorry, can we have a selfie? Sure. The advice for the people is live your life. You've only got one at bat. Do something with it. You're the man. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna leave with a framework of why I believe that audio should be the biggest conversation in this conference. I believe that way too many people make the mistake of trying to catch the next technology wave long before it's the actual technology wave. There's been a remarkable of money lost in the last three or four years around VR and AR, not because it's not coming, but because the number one mistake in this collective room is not paying attention to the actual consumer. We have ideologies around our technology. We are technologists and get excited about future technologies, but very often over the last 20 years, I have watched this ecosystem get way too ahead of itself without realizing that the consumer was not ready. Nobody is home right now sitting in a VR contraption spending 10 hours a day VRing. What we need to do is be best at what is current. How many people here listen to a podcast? Raise your hand. Raise it high. Look around. Now, put your hands down. How many of those people that just raised their hands were not listening to a podcast just five years ago? Raise your hands. That is what I spend my time on. Where are we now? Not four years from now, not four years ago, right this second. And right this second, we sit in an incredible place with audio. We value time and convenience over everything. As much as the world wants us to continue to value privacy, every day, humans around the world give up privacy for time, speed, and convenience. It's just the way we are as animals. 
In that insight, you must understand how important your audio strategy is going forward. How many people here consume YouTube videos? Raise your hand. Raise it high if you do. Just raise it high. How many of you now, when you watch YouTube videos, are starting to not even watch the video, you're just listening? Raise your hands. Look around, keep them up. Look around. This, my friends, between podcast growth, between the fact that the number one video platform in the world is now being consumed for a shocking percentage in audio, not video, is very important. You can imagine when I see that many hands why it gets hard for me to get excited about video production value when I know the actual consumption is actually being done in audio. Doesn't mean that video is declining, video is growing. Consumption is growing because we have devices with us at all times. We don't have to go home and watch television or the radio. I believe that the number one opportunity for the majority of this room is a very strong strategy around podcasting and audio content, especially because what has emerged in the last 24 months and will continue to grow is AI-driven voice devices in our homes. I believe that this is the end of an era where visual and written creative can establish so much brand that it preps you for an audio-centric brand warfare. I couldn't be more passionate and push everybody here to dramatically rev up the content they put out in the world. What's your lesson for a modern communicator in this hearing audio? To produce a hot volume has to be put on a pedestal. Everybody thinks that if you make a lot of quantity, you can't make quality. I think it's the reverse. I think quantity leads to quality because as you're putting it out, you can listen to what people are responding to and you can make better and better content. Okay, made up content? Sorry, excuse me. Volume, yes, move yes, move, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. for an Armenian yeah. podcasters yeah. and YouTubers. We just started. Um, make. I, I think the number one mistake people are making when they're a podcaster or YouTube is they're overthinking their content production and they're not spending enough time on the stories. It's the stories that people want. Like, production matters, but it's the story at the end of the day, and so more making, less thinking. And what if they have already started, but they have no results, for example, I don't know, they have been uh, doing videos for a year or two, but they have no results. The first three years I did Wine Library TV, nobody was watching. So do you think people are going to be pivoting to podcasting? Do you think podcasting is harder to monetize and thus it's... I think it's harder to monetize now because the metrics aren't out, but I think like anything else, that's what they all said about social networks in 2007, 2008. Um, Attention always eventually gets monetized. When Joe Rogan inevitably announces that he gets paid $100 million to exclusively be on whatever platform he's going to go on, I have a funny feeling everyone's going to be like, wait a minute. So I think when Rogan inevitably does Howard Stern 2.0, I think you'll start seeing people realize, oh, there is something here. And I think, I think people are very basic. They, they look for a report or a very simple ad product to make them feel good yeah. while underestimating when tens of millions of people are paying attention to something, inevitably there's an opportunity to monetize. You know, there's a huge uh, kind of consumer uh, understanding gap between uh, you know, Apple saying we're improving the voice uh, I got it. I believe that if you look at history, it's usually a singular moment. A killer app, a singular moment. So I believe there'll be an Alexa skill built that is so phenomenal, that catches virality, that makes everybody go, oh crap, I need that. You know, if you think back to the, to the iPhone, whether it was a social network, whether it was Spotify, which iTunes itself, yeah. I mean, I would argue yeah. iTunes itself, right? Um, <laughs> I, you know, whether it was MySpace, whether it was Tinder for dating, I, I think there's a moment, and I think there'll be a killer app or a functionality that catches the national, the global, you know, ecosystem, and the value prop will become obvious, and away we go. I remember eBay looking for wide awareness in the late 90s. It was, it was Beanie Babies that put so many people on eBay. I would say voice will have a Beanie Baby, uh, AR. It was Pokemon Go that, pe- that allowed people to even think about where this is going. 
I believe there'll be a singular voice moment that will trigger people saying, wait a minute, I can do that on that instead of this? Where do you see podcasting headed and the creation of new audio formats as well? I mean, I think podcasting will continue to massively grow. Mm -hmm. um, which doesn't mean individual shows will grow because once there's many more shows, there's only so much attention. Um, but I think they will continue to grow. And, uh, and as far as new formats, I think the, the, the next format is really skill-based audio where we as humans are interacting with audio. Mm -hmm. Where we're actually doing things through our voice and a smart device on the other side. Yeah, could you give an example where that's useful? Booking our plane through Alexa instead of Expedia on your phone. Mm -hmm. Alexa, I want to go to Miami. When would you like to go? Thursday between, can you look at my calendar and tell me the cheapest price and the best time for me to go? That is a far better experience because it's using information from your calendar. That is much smarter than my highest paid assistant and is far faster. And that was a very simple example that is easily done by Google Home by tapping into your Google Calendar and tapping into open web information. Think about that. Think about how fast the answer would have been done for me, whereas that would have taken a $100,000 admin an hour to achieve. Think about that production. It is true, it is way easier. But do you think people will trust that? It yes. Is? Yeah? So it's just a matter of getting custom. Just a matter of time. Of course, people didn't like smartphones. Yeah. People didn't like pagers. People didn't like the internet. People didn't like fax machines. People didn't like technology. People don't like the future, mm -hmm. inherently. And the ones that do win. They like it once it's there, right? They like it when they have no choice. Mm -hmm. Most people are stubborn and don't like change. So do you think AR and VR will ever reach a mass market, really? A hundred percent. Yep. Of course, because they're inevitably good technologies. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of entertainment and utility value in wearing those glasses and seeing information. You could literally be looking at me in 20 years and in the corner of your eye be given information of my latest thoughts of, you know, uh, you could, I could know who these people are. Right now, by wearing contact lenses, there could be a bubble above everybody's head and I can know how many followers they have, what their passions are, where they were yesterday. We're gonna like that. Why would it? It's scary at all. No, because I think cell phones and, and the internet are scary to our great, great grandfather. You know, so, no, I don't think they're scary. I don't think anything is scary because that's been the way, you know, mm -hmm. a, a airplane was scary, yeah. a radio was scary, mm -hmm. a book was scary. They were scary. Yeah. So, no, I don't think they're scary. I think, I think they're just advancement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't really see me as that person who can really spearhead and do what I'm doing. Everything you just said is super interesting to me based on the last thing you said. I have ambition to change things. You have ambition to change things. The point where you said people don't see me as someone is the most interesting part of your sentence. Nobody who's ever changed anything has pandered to what people think. You're right. You have to basically close your eyes and your ears for the next 20 years and just put out what you want to put out and then you have a chance of making it happen. But the more you worry or think or strategize around acceptance, mm -hmm. the more unlikely you'll achieve your goal. All right, because I'm also uplifting a ton of other people, so. I believe it, and you can do so much more the second you stop worrying about them believing you can. Right. Nobody has ever believed I could do what I've done except myself. Yeah, Jersey Boy made it. <laughs> can I take a selfie? Okay. Consuming voice right now. For example, you're mentioning recently that instead of maybe focusing on video, people should focus on podcasts and yes. creating audio content. Just wanna hear your thoughts on that. That is true. I believe that a wild percentage of YouTube video consumption is actually just audio. Um, I believe that people are walking the dog, working out, traveling on a plane, and are consuming audio. I think what's amazing, listen, a lot of people consume my content, thank God. A lot of those people listen to the video or podcast while they're at their desk working. If they had to watch the video that DRock and I make, they wouldn't be able to work at the same time. People are multitasking. 
And I think when people multitask, audio rises and video declines. That doesn't mean video is dead. Video is growing. We're consuming more than ever. It just means audio is rising and it's coming at the expense of non-consumption. I believe that or at the consumption of music instead of audio information. So I think the same person who walked their dog for 30 minutes every morning either just took in nature or used to listen to music, now is listening to a podcast. All right, let's go. Yes. Can I have just one short question? Sure, let's question. go, let's walk. This one. Like media publications are the main source for getting information or They're not, change? they're not or now. They need to evolve like anything else. Um, you can't be romantic of how you deliver information. It's the information, it's not the distribution. Too many traditional media outlets are too emotional about monetizing on television or print without realizing that we want to consume information somewhere else. And so my, my belief is that journalism is forever in play. It just needs to be thoughtful about where it's producing and distributing its content. Mission accomplished. Oh yeah. Boom, boom. Yes, sir. This is a small little gift from most of you. Thank you so Thank much. You so much for Thank you. But, but read it, please. I will take a look at it for sure. If you like it very much, do it. You got it, brother. Take care, everyone. Airport, John. Squawk up to the airport. Wow, really lucky, huh? What's that? We're really lucky that you knew Russian. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> go figure. When you go to the former Soviet Union, <laughs> it comes in handy. <laughs>